the six venomous snakes of South Carolina. Species Spotlight, we're gonna do the copperhead and the cottonmouth today. So hang in there, we're gonna have some fun. Bangs in your face. Subscribe now. The six venomous snakes of South Carolina. We are on number two, which is going to be a two for two, okay? We did the timber rattlesnake first, so go back and watch the first one, the timber rattlesnake video. Interesting stuff. Today we're going to do the keistradon, the copperheads and a cotton mouse. Coming up. Okay, before we get started, I got to thank our generous contributors, people that bought bricks, people that sponsored animals. I mean, we couldn't do this without y'all. But let me tell you, I got to say a special thank you to a new exhibit sponsor. Now, this is a special one, Nadina and I. Um, this is our little buddy, Caius, okay? He sends me little videos of him going, fangs in your face. <laughs> I mean, he's such a cool little cat. We love him. And Caius and his father sponsored the Zobcon exhibit. And it's going to be outstanding. We cannot wait to you come visit us guys and we get to see you in person but let me tell you um they sponsored a, a big exhibit and it's it, it's going to be really cool and we're going to put guys the name on it and he's going to be able to come see you in person here very soon but thank you to everybody that has contributed to the serpent center and we still have a few animals that that are looking for a sugar daddy that are looking for a sponsor okay and we have a few exhibits that are still available for sponsorship so if you're interested um, we'll put all the info down there, um, email us, and we'll fill you in. Let's get busy and pull out some snakes and talk about copperheads and cottonmouths. What's up, Venom Squad? Hey, I know that we said we're going to be knocking videos out weekly, okay? <laughs> Dean's back there laughing, and we are planning to. But, you know, you plan things, and nothing ever goes according to plan. These past two weeks have been a living hell here at the Serpent Center. <laughs> we have been working so hard, it's crazy. Our work has paid off, wait till you see it. We're actually gonna take you downstairs and give you the first look at the exhibit room in the Serpent Center. It took us a week to get them built, to, to have, have, have all the exhibits put in place and built. And it took Dina and I a week to clean them and do the glass. But it's outstanding. Where do you see it? We're going to walk downstairs to give you a quick view of the exhibit room. Okay, so just a quick view of the Serpent Center and our new exhibit room. And we were planning on being open in the middle of January. But as you can see, this the amount of work that we've put in is, is, is staggering. And, and we are just about dead on our feet. It's just me and Dina doing all this work. It's coming along beautifully, and we cannot wait for everybody to come see this in person. We have got a bunch of big, nice exhibits, and this stuff is strong. It's like half-inch PVC, um, quarter-inch tempered glass. I mean, it's it's like sturdy, strong stuff. We're ecstatic. I mean, look how big these exhibits are. These are four-footers. These are eight-footers. These are eight-foot long. Look how big they are. Four-foot high, and they're four feet deep. We're going to turn these into some of the coolest exhibits you've ever seen. They're going to be all naturalistic exhibits to suit the species within them. You're coming to the entrance of the Serpent Center. You'll walk down this lane and there'll be exhibits on each side. And we've got eight footers on the bottom. We've got four footers on the top. And you'll be able to come around, take this corner. You'll be able to come around this side and see exhibits to this side, which is also, there's more on this side. And this is what's cool. This exhibit, we had it designed so you can view it from both sides, from both sides of the lanes. This one is cool. This is my favorite one out of all of them. So we've got a few animals that still need sponsorship. And if somebody wants to sponsor an exhibit, we're gonna put plaques right here on the exhibit with their name, their business name. Just a quick look at what we've accomplished. And I'll tell you, if y'all follow me on Instagram, um, you'll see I. I posted just a quick picture and a quick video of it. And it took Dina and I four days to peel these things because when they construct them, 
They're covered in plastic to help protect the PVC so they don't get scratched up. But to peel the plastic off them and then to clean all the glass. <laughs> I swear to God, it took us days. Everything's got to be wired electrically, timers, and then the exhibits have to be designed per species, each one. So it's going to be a little longer, but we are on our way to opening very soon. And we are so excited to see everybody come visit the Serpent Center. It's coming, y'all, and we're excited, and we cannot wait to see y'all in person. Okay, so we're going to start today with the Copperhead. And I've got several different Copperheads. Now, previously, you know, the Copperhead was was five separate subspecies but with recent taxonomy changes which actually a, a very close friend of mine tim guyer he, he he did the study on it did the dna stuff and all that and he's a herpetologist and and submitted it and and taxonomy actually changed it they're, they're broken down into two now now it's just the eastern copperhead which is comprised of your Southern Copperhead, which we've got one in here, your Achistodon contortrix contortrix, and your Northern Copperhead, which is your Achistodon moccasin. Okay, and this is an important one. This, the Southern Copperhead is the medically significant one. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. <laughs> but, and then it's also your Texas Copperhead, or um, they're, they're basically calling it the, which is your Achistodon latisinctus, okay? And which comprises all the Western Texas, Missouri, all the other copperheads, but but they're broken into two now instead of five. And a lot of people don't agree with it, but they all have their DNA sequences, makes them two separate species instead of five now. But the five, I mean, you know, you look at your transpicos, your 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 latisinchus, which is your your broadband copperhead, um, the the southern copperhead, the Contortrix, Contortrix, the Northern, which is the moccasin, and there's one more. Um, Osage. The Osage, that's right. <laughs> Dina, Dina keeps me in line, y'all. The Osage <laughs> Copperhead. Today we're going to talk about the two, okay? And the medically significant one, which we still call the Southern Copperhead. This is the one that's being used in a lot of different studies and a lot of different medications are being made from this little guy's venom. But anyways... Enough of that boring stuff. Let's show you a snake. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm up here. Let me see how this snake acts. We're probably just going to go ahead and film the snake in the tub. These copperheads are a little squirrely, okay? <laughs> Let's see if I can platform this little rascal. Now, that is your classic southern copperhead, okay? And this is a little female. And, no, 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 no you little stinker. And she's a, she's a, she's a cheeky little which she'll definitely bite you. And normally copperheads are, once you got them in captivity for a little while, they actually turn out to be pretty good captives and they get a little bit placid. But I'm gonna set this little gal down right in her tub and we're gonna film her inside the tub so I'm not chasing her around this table. <laughs> but now, bites. This snake is responsible for Probably 90% of the venomous snake bites here in South Carolina is the damn copperhead. And it's because they're so prolific, okay? This snake is one of the snakes that we have been studying for many years, and there's been a lot of institutions studying the copperhead because it does an amazing thing. This snake has been recorded not just a couple times, it's been recorded a bunch of times now that it has an asexual birth capability. That means the females can just have babies on their own with no males present. And there's two types of asexual birth, but we call it parthenogenesis. They're able to reproduce on their own. How incredible is that? I mean, nature finds a way. And it's not because there's no males present. Females just have the capability to do that. It's, it's incredible. But parthenogenic birth, I mean, to be able to reproduce one organism, to be able to make more organisms on its own without a partner. Now, the bites that happen, I'll tell you, 99% of the time, it's males between the ages of 18 and 39 that get bitten. And it's normally somebody screwing with a snake, okay? I mean, we call it a legitimate bite if a bite happens out in the wild and say if somebody accidentally steps on one and, and, and gets bitten and stuff. But oddly enough, it's usually somebody fooling with a snake trying to catch it or trying to kill it. So that's how bites happen. And the thing is, 
The venom of, of this snake may not be that toxic, but it's still dangerous. I mean, there has been recorded deaths from the copperhead. And a lot of times it's attributed to a secondhand condition, like somebody with a, with a heart condition or, or a previous medical condition. And the bite just pushes it over the edge and adds to that problem. But there are recorded deaths from the copperhead. And there is antivenom that is very effective that works. Profab works, and antibiprum works. There, there's antivenoms that work on the copperhead. But bites are plentiful, especially here in South Carolina. But they can be a cheeky little snake, okay? They can be kind of a grumpy little guy. And if you fool with one, they'll definitely bite you. <laughs> but I'll tell you, as, as, a, as a keeper, as a herpetologist, as a serpentary moaner, and doing what I've been doing for the past 40 years, um, I've seen them in all spectrums of basically just very chill, laid back. Once you've got them in captivity for a while, they, they turn very placid. There's still not a reason to underestimate this snake because it's still a wild animal and it will bite you. So you give them the respect that they're due. But this snake is medically significant, okay? The southern copperhead, especially the southern copperhead, is the one that is being used in a lot of different research right now. It has a certain polypeptide in its venom called contortrostatin, okay? And what it does, this contortrostatin binds itself to cancer cells. It, it, it binds itself to the integrants of cancer cells. It stops it from sticking. So it's in trials, okay? And it's interesting stuff, but this snake just may be the animal that helps cure breast cancer. So very important animal. And with as plentiful as they are, I mean, who knows? I mean, this could be the animal that stops breast cancer. So cool stuff. There's also a product that is, it, it, I believe it's FDA approved, and it's being used. It's called Protac, and Protac is a, it's kind of like a diagnostic tool to find um, and target protein C's in your body. So it's, it's, it's used in a wide array of things. It, it's just amazing what's being done with copperhead venom. But there's also another enzyme or protein that's called chondrostatin. Okay, and chondrostatin targets metatastic melanoma cells and it literally inhibits it in lung colonization. So it, it may be used in lung cancer. I mean, it, it's endless what venom can provide for us and the importance of our little cheeky copperheads. You know what I mean? So it's, and, and, and I'll tell you, we can probably link to some of these articles, but let me tell you something really interesting that, that I read in an article just not too long ago. You know, we're talking about this snake's ability in an asexual birth with parthenogenesis. I just read an interesting article. We may be able to link to that article, can we, Dina? Yes, absolutely. Some of the articles we can't link to because we're, we're, we're privy to read them and they're not to be shared yet. They literally found 10 new components in the progenies of a parthenogenic birth from a copperhead. I mean, so you think that a parthenogenic birth would be a clone right, would be a, an exact clone of the mother. That may not be true because they actually tested the venom in the babies, okay, the progenies of this virgin birth from this female copperhead, and they found different venom components. They found one that literally never existed before. They found something completely new that they weren't even aware of. So it's just incredible. I mean, nature finds a way, right? How slick is that? The southern copperhead, what a cool snake. I mean, we love them. We have several of them. I actually had to switch that last one out because copperheads do this thing. This this is a different one. This one's actually one that is in hibernation right now. So she's kind of chill, okay? The last one, <laughs> it went crazy and started going nuts in this tub and started musting and it stunk the whole damn room up, okay? <laughs> and copperheads do that. It's a defensive posture and they actually must. And you always hear, well, copperheads smell like cucumbers. It don't smell like cucumbers. It smells bad. It stinks, okay? I mean, I've snake hunted my whole life, and I can smell when copperheads are around. And if you're walking in an area and you disturb them, they start doing this musting. And you can smell them immediately. It's a very distinct smell. And cottonmouths do the same thing. A lot of snakes do it. But these guys have a distinct smell from the Keisterdown complex. It stinks bad. So we had to switch that copperhead out and get another one to film. Enough on the copperhead. We're going to get a cotton mouth out next. 
but the southern copperhead, right? What a fascinating little animal. What a medically significant little animal. And who knows what the future holds for this animal and mankind. So we're going to move on, y'all. Okay, and our next snake on the list here is the cottonmouth, the AKA water moccasin. Now, this is your Echestrodon piscivorus. And this is also a very prolific snake here in South Carolina. And it also is responsible for quite a few bites. And I'll tell you, bites from the cottonmouth tend to be a little more serious than the copperhead. Uh, I think they're, you know, the copperhead and the cottonmouth, the snakes of the Echestrodon complex, they, they mainly hold a hemorrhagic or a hemolytic venom which is hemotoxic, works on your bloodstream. This is a cool snake. I love moccasins. I call them moccasins, cotton mouths. Um, a lot of people call them trap jaws. They have a lot of different little nicknames, but this is a true denizen of the swamp. This snake's usually associated with water. It is truly one of the only semi-aquatic pit vipers. And now this is a captive board specimen and it's actually being cooled down right now. We're keeping her in the cool room just so she cycles naturally, but this snake was born in captivity and it's beautiful. It's actually retained all of its baby banding and colors. And cotton mouse can range from uniform black to almost yellow greenish with these bands. They can really change up in colors. And cotton mouse from different regions, say like your Florida cotton mouse, are the ones that are usually darker in color, get a little bit bigger, but I have seen some Eastern cotton mouse. The biggest one I ever seen was in Hyde County, North Carolina. It was crossing a road. And let me tell you, it was every bit of six foot and this big around. It was a monster. And they can get pretty good size, but you, you just don't see them big ones like that anymore. I mean, habitat destruction, um, you know, roadways being put in through through certain habitats and these big ones just don't make it as long no more. They, they just don't reach that sexual maturity that, that, that they can get to. Talk about the master of its environment. This snake truly is a master denizen of the swamp. I mean, they are tough. And let me tell you, I found these things, hundreds of them in the wild, and I found them eating each other. I mean, they are definitely ophidious. They'll eat other snakes. They'll eat baby alligators, they'll eat turtles, they'll eat fish. And interesting fact, Piscovorus means fish eater. <laughs> These snakes will eat anything. Frogs, carrion, rotten fish. Um, I found one eating a bird one time, an old rotten bird. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy, but they're, they're definitely survivors. But we call them cottonmouth because they got a really distinct behavior that they do. When they're alarmed or they become defensive, They'll get in a nice tight coil and they'll throw their head back and they gape. We'll, we'll pop a picture in there of a gaping cotton mouth and they'll show you that white fluffy interior of their mouth and it's really white so they call it cotton mouth. But on the other hand, this snake is, I mean, it's, it's very reluctant to bite. I mean, you generally got to really mess with them to get one to bite you. You can step on them, you can fool with them. I mean, they will defend themselves, but a lot of bites that happen from cotton mouths are from somebody trying to handle them or pick them up or misidentified as a water snake. And there's a big misidentification problem here in South Carolina where a lot of people will bolt to an emergency room and say they've been bitten by a water moccasin or a cotton mouth and they've been bitten by a common water snake. And there's a lot of water snakes get killed because they think that they're the cotton mouth. <laughs> so it's all about learning the animals, knowing what you're looking at. I mean, so educate yourself on what's venomous and what isn't. And what's interesting is these guys have a pretty good range. I mean, they range all the way throughout the Southeast, all the way down into Florida, as far north as um, Southern Illinois, and as far west as Texas, um, Snake Road in Illinois. It's a big migration every year of the snake, the cottonmouth. You can see bunches of them there at certain times of the year. They actually shut that road down so the snakes can cross the bucket and run over. It's pretty cool. You know, with this snake being probably a little more toxic than, than your copperheads, then, you know, the thing is that there has been recorded deaths from the cottonmouth. And bites are very painful. And a thing that happens with cottonmouth bites is 
they end up turning a little bit necrotic and they kill tissue. So it's a little more serious than a copperhead bite. And a lot of bites do happen from this animal right here. And I'll tell you, if you don't move, if, if you don't fool with them and you leave them alone, you can admire the snake from afar, take photos of it, and then it just sits still. As soon as you get close to them and start mucking with them is when they turn defensive and start gaping. And as soon as you start laying your hands on them and fooling with them and getting rough with them, you're definitely risking a bite. If, if, if the snake feels threatened in any way, it's going to protect itself. So, you know, give these snakes the respect they deserve and admire them for what they are. And we definitely need them in the ecosystem because these guys are literally like nature's garbage cans. They clean up everything. They eat everything and anything. What a neat animal. I mean, this truly is the master of the swamp. Everybody thinks, well, the alligator's the master of the swamp. Nah, that's the master of the swamp right there. The cottonmouth. What a cool animal, right? So that is definitely a South Carolina native and how can you not love a cottonmouth, right? <laughs> Look at the head on that rascal, right? And she's a nice girl. She's very placid. This is a Captain Bourne one, so. She's here at the Serpent Center as an educational tool so I can train my first responders with her. But the cottonmouth, what a cool snake, right? Well, I don't want to leave her out too long. She's actually kind of in a cool state right now. I don't want to stress her, but what a cool snake, right? And you know what's cool is that them snakes in that complex of it's, it's it's pretty normal for the copperheads and the cottonmouths. They hybridize, and they've been found in the wild. It's happened in captivity, and we call them cottonheads. <laughs> I mean, they look kind of like, like, a, like a copperhead on steroids. I'll tell you, a buddy of mine's got one. It's five foot and it's big around. It's a big, mean son of a bitch. And it's just, it's a big, gnarly snake. It's really cool. We're going to see if we can get it and do a video with it. <laughs> but, um, and uh, so it, it's cool. They actually, they hybridize just kind of like the, the Eastern Diamondback and the Canebrake do down here in the South. But, uh, and it's a naturally occurring hybrid. But, anyways, um, if you like this video, hit the V logo and subscribe now. And come on back and check us out at Venom Central. We are working hard to get the Serpent Center open. And the thing is, guys, when we open, because of the pandemic and everything that's going on, we may have to book appointments and set things in place so everybody stays safe. That, that's our main goal. Everybody is safe. But we are looking forward to seeing you all in person and looking forward to your comments. Leave them, in the, <laughs> leave, them, leave them down there. And no haters, only players. Okay? <laughs> hey, y'all. We enjoy doing these. We hope you enjoy them. We hope you learn something. We truly are trying to put out some educational content. But come on back to Venom Central and find out what's happening at the Serpent Center coming soon. This is Willie. We're checking out. Later.